Welcome to the Crash Course. What you're about to view is a highly condensed version of a seminar that I've been giving for roughly four years, which consists of six to eight hours of material. The Crash Course seeks to help you understand the nature of some extremely serious challenges and risks to our economy and your future prosperity that exist. Hello, my name is Chris Martinson, and I'm going to be your host for this series. The Crash Course weaves together a number of seemingly disparate topics into a single story. We will discuss the economy, energy, and the environment because it's where these fields overlap and intersect that the greatest story of any generation will get told. By the conclusion of this presentation, you will understand and be thinking about the economy in a whole new way. I'm going to provide you with a framework that will clarify what, for many people, is a deeply confusing subject. The information in this mini-course took me several years to gather and develop into this highly condensed story. I must warn you, this will not be easy for some of you, and I know this from watching the reactions of numerous audience members over the years. We're talking about some very large changes, which are, admittedly, hard to get one's mind around. I am going to try and change your mind. I might even challenge some of your most closely held beliefs. And I'm going to try and convince you that it's past time for you to learn, pay attention, and take actions. I recommend that you take the crash course from the beginning to end, at least once, and then revisit it as necessary. At any time, you can speed through a slide by operating the slider at the bottom. Or you may skip ahead to any slide by clicking one of the numbers all the way at the top. With your help and feedback, we will be improving this presentation. If you note anything that's in error, that needs improving, or strikes you as excellent, please let me know. Some of this material is my own original thinking, but most of it is the work of others, which I have gathered. This presentation should be considered the work of interested and aware people everywhere. I want you to take the crash course at your own pace. I built it so that you could rewind sections that weren't clear to listen to them again. I deeply care that you get this material. I think it's very important to distinguish between facts, opinions, and beliefs. So I'm going to try very hard to be crystal clear when I'm presenting facts versus stating opinion or communicating my beliefs. So let me be right up front about this. I hold three beliefs, which I'm going to share with you, and then spend the rest of our time showing you how I got to these beliefs. The first is that the next 20 years are going to be completely unlike the last 20 years. And why is this important? Because we tend to base our view of the future on our most recent experience. That's just part of being a human. It's also a gigantic liability at key turning points. So I say that massive change is already upon us. When I first gave this material as a talk three years ago, I used to say massive change is coming. Well, it's here now. That much is completely obvious. And the belief I hold is that it's really just getting underway. And I'm going to show you why I believe that. Next, I believe that it is possible possible that the pace and or scope of change could overwhelm the ability of our key social and support institutions to adapt. Katrina taught us that a major U.S. city could be wiped out and pretty much remain that way for years. That is an example of major change occurring faster than our ability as a nation to respond. The types of changes I foresee in our economic landscape are much larger than Katrina. My third belief is that we do not lack any technology or understanding necessary to build ourselves a better future. Rather, we only lack the political will, which is really a reflection of the fact that we the people have not yet raised our voices in unison for real, substantive change. So the good news is that we already have everything we need, and the bad news is that we might not deploy it fast enough. Remember, these are simply my beliefs right now, and I reserve the right to change them if new information suggests that they are wrong. So what do I mean when I say massive changes upon us? Well, here is where we need to burrow into the three E's, which is where we'll spend the rest of our time in the crash course. The first E is the economy, which is the lens through which the crash course looks at everything. Within the economy, there are four primary areas of concern. Exponential money, the first ever collapse of a global credit binge, an aging population, and a national failure to save. If it isn't clear to you what these mean, don't worry, we'll be discussing each of these in detail. The next E is energy, and there we will discuss what peak oil implies for an economic system that is based on continual expansion. This topic is important enough that I should dedicate the entire crash course to it, but I can't and I won't. And finally, the third E, the environment, will be exerting its own unknowable but certainly significant economic burdens due to shrinking resources and other systemic pressures at the same time that the other two E's will be clamoring for your money and attention. 
the story that I'm going to weave for you cuts across all three E's and will make the claim that our monetary system is badly out of step with reality and will suffer severe instability and possibly collapse as a result. It is fair to say that this particular constellation of issues, problems if you will, has never been faced before at these levels. Never. Whether you find this terrifying or exhilarating is simply a matter of your mindset. One key towards easing your mind is being armed with accurate and detailed information. This is what the crash course will deliver. When viewed individually, each one of these sub-areas on each one of these E's could entirely consume your entire attention. But I'm going to make the claim that these problems are so intertwined that they cannot be solved in isolation. All three E's need to be considered at the same time. How are they linked? By something very powerful that we desperately need to understand a lot better. Please join me for Chapter 3, Exponential Growth. Thank you for listening.